Mark chapter 16, reading verses 14 through 16. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and the hardness of hearts, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had been risen. And he said to them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. You know, the Bible teaches us, James made this statement here, but the Bible teaches us in our lives that as God's children, we are to submit ourselves to Him. To his leadership, to his authority. You know, we as parents, what, what do we want from our children? But we want our children to be obedient. We want our children to, to do what we ask them to do, to, to follow the rules, to, to behave themselves, and, and uh, you know, to live a life uh, that, that, you know, honors us in our lives as parents. We don't want our children going out and doing something and say, well... I guess, you know, that's the way they were raised or something. God is no different. God wants His children to submit to His authority, to His leadership, and to follow Him. The word submit in the Greek has to do with to come under authority of another, to be obedient. Um, it was a military term. It had to do with like in uh, uh, military, how uh, there are ranks, there are officers uh, in, in the military, and, and each officer has a place in, in the rank. Uh, there's the general of the army, and then there's a general, a lieutenant general, a major general, so on down the line till you get down to the, to the private. And each one in the rank has authority, and that's what God wants us to understand is He wants us to fall under His authority in life, to, to place ourselves in that proper order. problem is we live in a society today that no longer wants to take orders. We no longer want to be under authority of anyone. We no longer want to submit ourselves to anyone. We want to do our own thing. Uh, we, we, the church <clears throat> that of Laodicea the church, uh, the, the seven churches that God spoke to in the book of Revelation was the one church that God himself couldn't find anything good to say about that church. And that word Laodicea literally means the people's rights. And that's where we're living at today. Everybody feels like it's my right. I have a right to do this. I have a right to live my own life. I have a, you know... We need to understand that we no longer belong to ourselves. We belong to God. We have been purchased with the price of Jesus Christ. And we need to be willing to place ourselves under His authority. You know, we, we see, some people only see God as this loving, kind, compassionate, merciful, forgiving God. And God is all those things. But we fail to see Him as a God who's going to pass judgment upon the world one day. Sometimes we have this tendency to think because we, we feel like we got by with it because nobody knows about it. Nobody saw us do it. We haven't been caught at it. We haven't been punished for it. But God sees everything and judgment is coming one day. God does not let these things slide. I thought about different people in the Bible. I've mentioned it many times. Uzziah, when, when he reached out, the, he, he thought the ark was going to fall off of the ox cart, and he just reached out to keep it from falling on the ground. Yeah. And God struck him dead because God said, Don't touch the ark. Amen. He was disobedient. God placed men all through the ages in positions of authority. And God has said, don't challenge my authority. It's not that person, it's me operating through them. Some guys decided they was going to challenge 
uh, Aaron and his sons in the priesthood one day. Moses said, well, we'll just have a meeting and see. When he went out, the sons of Korah came before him. The Bible said the earth just opened up and swallowed them up. Their families, their belongings, everything they owned, and it closed back up. Why? Because you don't mess with God's authority. Moses understood what God meant. But he said, speak to the rock. Moses said, well, the last time I had to strike the rock. Let me do it again because it worked the first time. And he struck the rock and God did honor Moses and let the water come forth. But there was a punishment. There was a, a price to pay for not being obedient to God. The price was Moses didn't get to enter into the promised land. He died on that side of the Jordan because he was disobedient to God. We have to realize and understand if we don't submit ourselves to God, there's a price to pay. In life, <clears throat> God has placed a calling, a special calling upon every believer's life. We talked about it, some, it's been a good while back, we, we studied it in Bible study one Wednesday night, one Wednesday when we was here. <clears throat> Matthew 25 is a story that Jesus used to illustrate the kingdom of God. Because he said the kingdom of God is like. It's like a man, he said, who took this journey to a far country. But before he left, he called all of his servants to himself. And he gave to each one a gift. A talent, a call. Now the story illustrates three men. One who had five talents, one who had two, and one who had one. But the Bible said that he gave to every one of his servants a talent. Paul describes the body of Christ in the book of Ephesians and as well in the book of Corinthians. He describes the body of Christ as the human body. And he says, every part, every part of the body, you know, most of us here, some of you may not have experienced this yet. There comes a point in time that the body don't work like it used to work. Particularly on mornings like you get up on the morning, this morning when it's cold and rainy. You got places that hurt and ache that when you're 20 or 30 years younger, you didn't even know you had. Amen. Sometimes that's the way the body is. The body of Christ. It doesn't function the way it should function because every part is not fulfilling its purpose in life. It's not fulfilling its role. Now, that's a specific calling that God places on every one of our lives to make that body work together. That's not what I'm going to talk about this morning. I'm going to talk about this morning what I call a generic will of God. It's a will of God that God places on every born-again believer in the church. And it's what Jesus said to His disciples in the Scripture we read this morning. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That is a calling that God has placed upon our lives as believers. The Bible says in 1 Peter, or 2 Peter uh, 3 and 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. We understand that, you know, we look at people in life sometimes. We look at a, a scene where uh, um, a, a terrorist chops off someone's head. And, and we think, that guy doesn't deserve any mercy. That man de deserves to die the same way he killed that individual. But yet God would just assume that person... Receive mercy and receive forgiveness as any one of us sitting in this sanctuary this morning. Because God so loved not the righteous man, but God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It's not God's will that any man should perish. 
God, it, it breaks God's heart every time a person leaves this life and has to spend eternity in hell because He sent His Son for each one of us. Yes. Paul told Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, he said, Therefore I exhort, first of all, for supplications, prayers, intercessions, be giving thanks for made to all men, for kings, for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is a good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men, not some men, not most men, all men, and that's mankind, not just the male, all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's desire. And if that's God's desire, that should be our desire as well. We all heard the saying, dumb as a bo box of rocks. There's a scripture in the Bible where Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and the crowd was honoring Jesus and shouting Hosanna to God and Hosanna to God in the highest and praising Him and worshiping Him. And the Pharisees came out to meet Jesus. Now they didn't come out to meet Him because the other people did. They come out to meet Him to quieten the crowd down. He said, uh, Jesus, don't you understand? We're celebrating the Passover. This is one of the solemn feasts that we have. This is one of the pilgrimage feasts where everybody, every Jew has to come back home. Quieten your people down out here. You're disturbing us. And Jesus told them, he said, listen, if these people don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Amen. Yeah. If you don't do your job, God may choose a rock to do it for you. That's right. You got a choice. You can do what God's called you to do, or you can allow a rock to do it for you. It's a choice that you make in life. Jesus told the disciples, as he as in our morning scripture we read, go into the world, preach the gospel to every living creature. He that believeth shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. But he told them also, he said, <clears throat> what I want you to do, before you begin this mission, before you go out into the world, he said, I want you to first tarry in Jerusalem. I want you to wait <clears throat> on the promise of the Father before you go out. Acts 1 and 8 tells us why he did this. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You know, I, I think his scripture has been misused a whole lot. Because we, we, we misuse this power that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. We, we think about it for all kinds of things. But he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Well, I just don't know if I can witness to somebody or not. God says if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to have the power to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done, and you can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about a witness? What is a witness? <clears throat> the dictionary says the witness is one who has knowledge of an event or a change from a personal observation or experience. The Greek has a little bit different definition. The Greek says it's a martyr. Are we willing to give ourselves to promote the gospel? Are we willing to give of ourselves to share the good news of Jesus Christ? Are we willing to be that living witness that God wants us to be? Are we committed to Christ to be the witness that's willing to give of himself or herself for the good of the gospel's sake? To share the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, some people say, well, I, I, just, I, I, just, I just can't witness. I can't, you know, all witnessing is... <clears throat> 
is sharing what Jesus has done for you. Amen. John, the forerunner of Christ, man walked down the road one day and he met Jesus. And he shouted out, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Things didn't go well for John. And John's in prison. And I'm sure like any of us, John had a little doubt now. You know, if, if every day I got up and I, I went out and I shared about Jesus and I shared about this Messiah coming and people weren't listening and I got thrown in jail for it, I might have a little doubt. Man, am I doing the right thing? Am I following God? I mean, you think if you follow God, you're not going to be cast into prison. But he was. The doubt came in his mind. And so he sent his disciples to Jesus. And he said, ask him, are you the one or should we seek another? You know, Jesus could have said a lot of things. Jesus could have said, go tell John, I am the Son of God. And he's on the right track. But Jesus didn't. Jesus said, listen, go tell John the things you've seen and the things you've heard. Be a witness. Tell what you've seen, what you've heard personally. That's what we do when we share the good news of Jesus Christ. We tell what we've seen and what we've heard. What about the story of Elijah? When Elijah was on the mountain with the prophets of Baal, he allowed the prophets of Baal to go first. They're going to offer a sacrifice. They're going to do everything it takes to offer a sacrifice to God, except they're not going to light the fire on the wood under the altar. They're going to pray and allow God to send fire from heaven down to light the altar. Prophets of Baal, they do everything humanly possible. They cry, they pray, they scream, they cut themselves, they fall on their face in the dirt. They do everything humanly possible. And Elijah the whole time is mocking them and making fun of them. Finally, the Bible said, at the time of the evening sacrifice. We have to learn there is a time it's God's time. Amen. We don't go when we feel like it. We go when God sends us. Elijah, he waited till the time was right. He was at the right place because he was at the crowd where they could all see what God did. And when he prayed, he said, God, according to your word. So we got to make sure we operate in God's time, in God's place, and according to God's Word. And we just share what God has laid upon our heart. Are we willing to go into the world and preach the Gospel? Are we willing to share? All, all preaching the Gospel is, the Gospel, the word Gospel, means good news. It's not something fancy, it's not elaborate, it's simply the good news. The good news is that Jesus Christ died on an old rugged cross to pay the price for our sins, for the atheist's sin, for the agnostic's sin, for the terrorist who's out there persecuting Christians. He, God died for their sins. For the drunkard out here on the highway, God died for his sins. Every person that's ever had, took one breath on this earth. God died for their sins. Yeah. He sent Jesus to pay the price. And what He asked each one of us to do is to go out into the world and share the good news. He said, you're going to be a, a witness for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You start at home. And you work your way out. And you share the good news of Jesus Christ. Are we willing to submit ourselves to the authority of God and be that living witness for Jesus Christ? 
It's what He asks each one of us to do is to be a witness. Let's pray. Father, we thank You this morning for the privilege and honor to come and to share Your Word. And Father, we're thankful that You have given us the privilege of being able to share the Word of life to others. To share the good news of Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. And Father, we pray this morning that You've spoken to each heart. And Father, where we have refused in life to take advantage of the opportunities that You've given us to share Jesus with the lost and dying world. Father, we pray that You'll forgive us for that and You'll give us a fresh opportunity to share the good news. And that we'll take advantage of those opportunities, Father, to bring life into the people around us by showing forth the light of Jesus Christ into a darkened world, Father. We pray Your richest blessings upon each one here. And Father, we do pray this morning, if there's one present that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of the life, Father, we pray that today will be the day of their salvation. Help each one of us to hear Your voice and draw closer to You. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask You to stand with me this morning as we close.